The Eagles offense really struggled on Monday night against the Kansas City Chiefs. Jalen Hurts was only 14 of 22 passing for 150 yards. He threw an interception. And he took five sacks. It was one of his worst EPA performances of the season. What was going on? Was it just the weather? Is it a, you know, is it layover from the bye? What's what's wrong with the Eagles offense? Well, let's go to the film and see if we can figure that out. On this first play, we have the first third down opening drive for the Eagles. The defense has gotten off the field, giving you great field position. What are you going to draw up? I, I don't know what's going on in this play. It looks like mirrored concepts, which means we're running the same thing to both sides of the field. The problem is it's all in breaking. Usually if you're going to do mirrored concepts, it's slant flat or smash or crash or something like that here. Everything's just running into the same space. It's almost like you've sort of got like a, I don't know if you want to call it a post and like in routes, just you can watch as the play develops here. There's just nowhere for Hertz to go. I watching this play live. I thought he drops his head and gets out of the pocket and he didn't really need to, but like, where's he supposed to throw this football? Your, your four receiving options are just all right here and they're just helping cover each other up. So I don't know what was going on on this play. Uh, this is surely not how they drew it up, but it's the third play of the game. Like this is in your scripted play calls. This can't happen. This can't be how you start a game that the chiefs are going to run a concept. We're going to talk about later. This is a TE stunt. That means your defensive tackle is going to attack outside, leaving room for your defensive end to loop back inside. And they pair that with a slot corner blitz. Now the Eagles will pick it up pretty well here the best they'll pick it up all game because Kenny Gainwell comes over to be the fourth man in the protection. It just doesn't matter if there's nowhere to go. So I don't blame Hertz at all. This one looked bad on broadcast watching on the all 22. I don't have a clue where he's supposed to go with this football. Really shaky start there from the offense on the first drive. And so we come out here the next time Now we're going to bring a guy in motion. This is DeAndre Swift in motion. The Eagles are in a pony package here. This is two running backs, and they're just going to sort of run a deep clear-out route. Then you've got a deep crossing route here from Devonta Smith, and then you're going to get your motion here, and he's going to sort of run more of a shallow. So it's sort of a levels concept. You're max protecting here. Chiefs are sending a lot of pressure early here. And you see Hurts. This is going to be blocked up pretty well. Hertz is already fading away. I don't really care about that because it's the direction the play is going. Like if this play is going to the left, this would be really bad quarterbacking, right? You've got blockers to account for this. You've got a pretty clean pocket here. I mean, maybe you don't trust your third string tight end and a running back here, a backup running back and pass protection, but there's no problem drifting away to the play side here. Extends the play, finds Devonte Smith for a big chunk gain. You watch it from the back view again. They do a pretty good job of picking this up. Boston Scott, Jack Stoll coming across here. Hertz doesn't necessarily have to move. But again, it's totally fine because it's the direction the play is going anyway. So he shortens this slow throwing angle, gives himself room, delivers the pass to move the sticks. This one turns into a bit of a missed opportunity. Uh, the Eagles are going to fake the bubble screen here. And we've seen them do this before. You fake the screen and you get your outside receiver on a vertical route. The idea is to try to take the top off the defense and score. Now, the outside cornerback, he doesn't necessarily bite on the bubble. He just tries to really aggressively jam A.J. Brown. And it doesn't work. He's going to end up stumbling. A.J. Brown beats him. Boom. Right there. Don't look at Hurts right now. Just look at A.J. Brown. This is a touchdown. Like, you putting this ball right here. This is a touchdown. Maybe the safety can get an angle over here and tackle you at the twin yard line. So why doesn't Hertz pull the trigger? Well, Jordan Mailata totally whiffs on his block. And there's a guy immediately in Hertz's face. So shout out to Hertz for being able to extend and get this ball to Swift. But if you watch here off the left side, Jordan Mailata just gets totally beat on this rep. Guy's directly in Hertz's lap. Really unfortunate. I don't know what he's looking at there, but that probably costs the Eagles six points because, again, A.J. Brown totally dusts his guy in coverage. Just a really unfortunate rep. Now let's go to another one. I thought this was a really cool play design. I would like to see the Eagles do more of this. They're going to motion A.J. Brown across the formation, and they're going to get into a little RPO with a, 
uh, it's sort of a slant flat wheel. So you're going to get the flat route coming across here, the split zone blocking. Uh, A.J. Brown is going to sort of run this wheel route out of the backfield, and Devonta Smith, he's not really going to run a slant. He's going to sit down here. But the stress that this creates on the defense, okay? So first, well, first let's just watch it and see why we make the decision to pull so we see number 90 dives down inside, right? This is our read guy. He dives inside, so we're pulling it out. At the point he pulls it out, we've got a lot of options here. We have created stress horizontally for the defense on this defender by motioning A.J. Brown out. You're stressing him horizontally, and then you get this tight end coming across, and this stresses this defender. He's got to come down and take this, right? And you just have all kinds of room for Devonta Smith to settle down behind it. Uh, really liked this play design from the Eagles. You can see the bind. You can see the bind in the steps this linebacker takes. Right, uh, right here. Watch him. Steps, steps. Where do I go? Where do I go? He doesn't know where to go. And you get the ball out to Devonta Smith to move the chains. Really cool play design on that one from the Eagles. We'll see it from the back view here. Again, watch number ninety on the left side. You're reading him out. He crashes. We pull this ball out. Hurts hitches once, delivers the ball on target to Devonta Smith. This is a tough one. Let's talk about the interception. The Chiefs are going to bring a cover zero blitz. Uh, this means that they're sending the house, right? They're sending one more guy than you can block. And so the Eagles are going to send five out on routes. That means the Chiefs are going to rush six. You're plus one. You're guaranteed someone's going to get a free run at the quarterback. In this case, it's going to be your slot defender here. Now, that means that you have to play one-on-one -on -one coverage across the board. And so that's a matchup you always like with A.J. Brown. And the, the play call here is for A.J. Brown to run like a dig route. And A.J. Brown tries to sort of turn this into a post route. And you can see why he does that. First, let's just watch A.J. Brown at the snap of the ball. He gets inside his man. He's over the top. Now, A.J. Brown is supposed to be running this route. A.J. Brown knows there is nobody between me and the end zone if we run this way. He throws the hand up. He says, let's go deep. Let's go score a touchdown on this play. Here's the problem. Right here. Hertz is under pressure. Hertz is hot, right? Cover zero blitz. You can't block everybody. That Your internal clock is screaming at you. You just need your receiver to be where you expect him to be. Now, I'm not here to point fingers. I don't know how this is being coached in the room. To me, if I'm the quarterback... I understand the compulsion to want to go deep here. I do. I, I like the ability to freelance in situations to have good chemistry with your guys. But when I'm getting zero pressure, I just want my receiver to be where he's supposed to be. I don't have time to process anything else. And so I would. I, this is a miscommunication. I don't fault A.J. Brown for doing this. This is the risk that you run when you allow these sorts of options to be built into your offense. Also, like... Is this ball right here not a touchdown? There's there's no safety back here. There's nobody deep. This is empty field. I still think A.J. Brown can score if he runs the called route. Um, that's really neither here nor there. This is a really unfortunate rep. Miscommunication. This stuff happens sometimes when you allow receivers and quarterbacks to adjust things on the fly. We'll watch it from the back view here. You can just see uh, the Chiefs send five, right? And you're also bringing the nickel off of the edge. So it's impossible to block. This is not the offensive line messing up. This is it's not possible to block six with five. Hertz has to get the ball out. Ends up being intercepted. Really unfortunate play there for the Eagles. I want you to watch the Chiefs defensive line here. Right as I start the clip. Just watch. See that shift? This is a great, great wrinkle. The Chiefs were doing all game. The Eagles are going silent count. You see... Uh, Cam Jurgens, the right guard, he taps Jason Kelsey. That signals to start the snap. You're playing at Arrowhead. It's really loud. It's hard to use an actual cadence. The Chiefs know this, and so they're king off of that. And as soon as he turns to tap, they shift, and it changes the picture, and the offensive line doesn't have time to adjust. They did this throughout the game. It's really obvious on this play. Uh, I thought it was something interesting to point out. Aside from that, what we're looking at on this play is the Eagles are running a concept called Heat which is basically like a real deep kind of sit route tagged alongside like a deep, deep crossing route. And this is designed really to beat quarters. Uh, it can mess with cover three too, especially if there's something in the flat that kind of draws down your uh, outside third corner. 
and, and you can see where this would come open uh, as you roll the tape here. You could see where if Jalen Hurts doesn't get sacked, you could maybe throw this football out here. You could lay it out towards the 40, and you could go for an explosive play. The problem is the protection. It's not there. The Eagles have been heat, heated up all game. And I feel like this is one, personally, where this is first and ten. Like, I would rather see you come off of this quicker right now. You just don't have the time. Just dump this off. Like, you're probably going to get two yards, but second and eight is a lot better than second and 17, which is what this one turns into. I know the Eagles want to hunt explosive plays. You just sometimes have to know that it's not working. Steve Spagnuolo has your offensive line on their heels. You need to run a little bit more quick game. Jalen Hurts needs to know I need to get to that check down quicker. I thought there was far too much holding the ball for too long in the first half. There's a reason Jalen Hurts was sacked five times in the first half. He wasn't sacked in the second half. It's because they started to change this as the game went along. Then we get to that disastrous final drive before half. I don't know what's going on here. Watch Lane Johnson. I normally try to give you answers. I don't have an answer here. Uh, the way he blocks this just shoves the guy by it. That's what you do on a screen or on like a QB draw, but nobody else is doing that. Like we watch from the back view, none of the other offensive linemen are letting their guys go. I don't know if Lane gets the call wrong. What, what just one handed shove. Like it's not even really an attempt to block here. You just watch. He throws the one hand, pushes him. Nobody else is doing that. Everybody else is blocking. So I don't know if Lane mixes the call up here. Jalen's able to at least get back near the line of scrimmage, but not a good way to start your drive. And then here we get this concept I talked about earlier, that the Chiefs were running a lot. Uh, the Eagles are going to go five out on routes here. So you've got running back to the flat. You've got like this corner route from your receiver. Now it's close with being able to throw this corner out, but here's what the Chiefs do. They got Chris Jones. This is a TN stunt or a TE stunt tackle. Defensive tackle is attacking the tackle upfield. You're going to loop behind him. And you're going to pair that with the corner blitz. Now, the reason this is so difficult, and we'll look at it more from the back view, so maybe I'll just save that for a second. Let's just watch up field here. Right here. If this ball could start coming out right here to Devonta Smith, you could throw it into the sideline. You just need a half second more. Not a, You need a quarter second more because he's getting hit right now by Trent McDuffie. Ball comes out. Fortunately, it's right into Jalen Hurts' hand. That could have been disastrous. And so now let's watch it from the back view and talk about why this is so tough. So you're sliding to the left. What that means is uh, Jason Kelsey is snapping the ball and he's working this direction. That means you're one-on-one. -on, -one. on the back side, you've got three guys blocking two on this side if number 22 doesn't come. So if number 22 doesn't come, then Cam Jurgens should be passing off number 95, Chris Jones, to Lane Johnson. He should be catching number 56. I think that's George Karloftis coming to the inside. However, because Jason Kelsey is here, Jason Kelsey is here with no responsibility. For my money, uh, I could be wrong on this. Brandon Thorne might at me later and let me know. For my money, the way the Eagles should be handling this, uh, because the Chiefs do a brilliant job here. They're rushing three against three and they get a free runner. That's your dream, right? Because they've been showing this look, to me... Cam Jurgen should stay locked up with Chris Jones. Just let Karloftis loop inside. Jason Kelsey is there waiting. And then you let Lane Johnson pick up the slot blitz. See, he tries to pass him off. But the problem is he's passing him off to Lane Johnson, who already needs to be getting out to number 22. And so now you've got two guys blocking one right here. Two on one. That's fine. Except it sparks a one on two. And Lane Johnson's good, but there's not anybody that good. And they get him here for a strip sack. Really fortunate the ball's not recovered. Fortunate Jalen's not injured on that play. I mean, we've seen quarterbacks get injured on plays like that. You're going to see that again in this game. And it continued to be a problem. It's not something the Eagles did a great job adjusting to. Now, obviously, you don't see any sacks in the second half. Uh, but that's a huge thing to look for teams to try to do against the Eagles moving forward. Now, I don't want people to think I'm throwing shade at the offensive line. Because I thought the offensive line still did a pretty good job in this game. Steve Spagnolo does a great job. But I want you to watch when I click play. I've talked about the defensive front shifting. 
Look, Cam Jurgens is looking back at Hertz now. He's about to tap Jason Kelsey. Watch what they do. Right now, where does it look like the pressure's coming from? We got three over here. We've only got two over here, right? So you would think Jason Kelsey should slide this direction. But watch, as the tap happens, he's going to come flying down. We drop back. We've changed where the three are. There's no time for the offense to adjust this, but Jason Kelsey slides to the bottom of the screen. Like, they're sniffing this out. And so, first of all, that's great. We get it coming the right direction here. We've got our protection picked up. We've also got this safety stepping down, single high. Let it fly to A.J. Brown on the sideline. Hurts hits the top of his drop, balls out. Pretty ball, just a little too close to the sideline. And A.J. Brown, although he catches it, is unable to come down with the ball. But you see Jason Kelsey right there, right? Which direction is he pointing? I, I just love that. Jason Kelsey is such a smart player. And you see right here, even as Cam Jurgens is tapping him, what's he doing? Look at his arm. We're sliding to the left. He knows. He knows what's coming. Picks it up. Hurts hits the drop. Balls out. Again, just a little bit outside. Not able to bring it in. This is another new wrinkle I really liked in this game. It was the running back angle screen. You call it angle screen, a Texas screen, a mid screen, whatever you want to call it. We get the orbit motion here. We're going to stretch the defense, right? We could be throwing a screen out this way. You've got to react to this. You've got to widen out a little bit, and you see that step to widen out. And what are we doing? We widened him out just so we've got a good angle to block him with the tight end. We get guys coming up, and we throw the little angle behind. And I just love this design. I thought this was brilliant. Swift makes a guy miss there, and he's able to get near the first down marker. I thought that was a really cool play by the Eagles. Watch it from the back view here. Devonta Smith in orbit motion. You've got to respect it, right? And it widens you out just enough for the tight end to get a hat there. I would have liked to have seen Cam Jurgens there hit number 50 so Swift doesn't have to make him miss. That's a little thing. Uh, overall, really good play there. This is my favorite play call from the entire night. And it's not a pass play, but I'm putting it in here because this is what Jalen Hurts brings to the table for you. You're down in the red zone. You're not worried about getting beat over the top. The Chiefs get really aggressive. Again, they're going to run a cover zero blitz. That means we are sending the house. We're playing one-on-one -on -one man coverage behind. And so we've got man coverage here. We've got man coverage. Man, man. <clears throat> he is responsible for the tight end. Everybody else is coming. We're coming off the edge. Everybody's blitzing. We have one more blitzing than you can block. You can't block us. And Brian Johnson and Jason Kelsey and Jordan Mailata and Jalen Hurts laugh and say, we weren't going to block you anyways. And they're going to run a QB counter. Uh, they're going to get Jason Kelsey pulling to the right. They get Jordan Mailata pulling to the right. We can't block the left. We're just going to leave them all unblocked, and we're going to get huge numbers advantage. And it's even better because this guy, this linebacker, is responsible for the tight end, and so he steps over here and takes himself out of the play. There are four guys taken out of this play that the Eagles don't put a hand on. It's just brilliant. So you watch this here. Boom. You got one, two, three, four guys straight through, and you got Jalen Hurts with a convoy running downfield into the end zone. That's just, that's just fantastic. Not every quarterback can do this. If you can, this is such a good way. You can't bring pressure like this. You just can't. The Eagles are going to empty you out, and as long as Jalen Hurts can run, you can't play like this in the red zone. And the Eagles make them pay with a touchdown. I thought this was just such a fantastic play call. And then here's something else we've been begging for in this offense. Uh, the Chiefs are going to bring five. They're going to bring a linebacker and a corner on this side. Uh, he is dropping out into coverage. And I love the, the side adjust on this route by Devonta Smith in the slot. He sees his guy blitz. He knows there's nobody behind him. Just turn around to the ball. Give your guy, give your quarterback an outlet to get the ball out fast. Hurts and Smith on the same page here. Boom. Ball's out. Throwing into the teeth of the blitz. Second and long. And you get it down to third and one. You brotherly shove on the next play and move the chains. It's brilliant stuff from the offense. The offense really did operate at a higher level in the second half than it probably gets credit for. And it's little things like this that don't pop when you watch them on broadcast that are so good watching them adjust to it later in the game. Now it worked once. Let's just play the hits, right? We're going to get 
DeAndre Swift on this little angle screen again. And again, it's going to go for a big play. The Chiefs are being aggressive in some of the games they're running, and they want to get to the quarterback, and you get plays like this where you can just shuck the defensive line and get to the second level. DeAndre Swift running in space behind his offensive lineman, weaponizing Jason Kelsey, getting him out on the move. Uh, it's just so much fun to watch when they get Kelsey and when they get Cam Jurgens and when they get Landon Dickerson out on the move on plays like this. And then we go to this one. This is just a crazy design here by Steve Spagnolo. Look at the, this looks like pressure is coming, right? In fact, there's no pressure on this play. The Chiefs are only going to rush three. They're going to have a spy on Jalen Hurts, and then they're going to double team two receivers. So you've got A.J. Brown down here on the solo side. He's being double teamed right here. And then you have Devonta Smith. Devonta Smith is on the inside right here. He is being double teamed as well. And so I love what they do to counter this. He's going to sort of run like, a, like an angle post. And he's going to get both of these guys stuck on the outside because of the way this bunch works, right? One guy attacking upfield. Then we've got an inbreaker, and it confuses everything. And now you've got the two guys with eyes on Devonta Smith are trying to worry about getting out here because it looks like he's going out. And he breaks back to the inside. Really cool design there. Great route by Devonta Smith. Hertz hits him to move the ball across the midfield. Uh, so... Honestly, really fun, really cool design by Steve Spagnuolo. It is wild to double-team two receivers on the same play. Jalen Hurts figures it out, and he gets the ball to Devonta Smith anyways. And then we're going to end on this one. It's my favorite throw of Hurts by the, of the night. And if you're looking at this on film and you see you've got a slot cornerback right here with a safety three yards behind him. This should scream to you that the cornerback's blitzing. This is what we call a capped cornerback. He is capped. That means there's a guy over the top of him capping him that's going to take his coverage responsibility because he's coming on the blitz. And so Hertz sees this. At the top of the screen, they're going to run everybody's favorite concept, Crash. This is a mirrored concept. Watch A.J. Brown's route. Devonta Smith is supposed to run this crash route, but Jalen Hurts checks this play at the line of scrimmage. And Jalen Hurts checks into a slot fade because, say it with me, single high, let it fly. Right? We've got one safety, and I love everything about what Hurts does. Watch as he takes his drop here. Watch where his eyes go. He is looking at the top of the field at a route that he knows he is never going to throw. This half of the field is not on the menu. He's not throwing this, but he's keeping the safety over this direction so he has single high coverage, trusting Devonta Smith to win on this fade route. And as he completes his drop, watch, he's going to flip those hips open, stick his cleats in the ground, balls out. Now, is this ball a little underthrown? Yeah, maybe, but also look at where they're at as he's releasing this ball. So it's possible the back shoulder is what's in play here, and Devonta Smith really ends up getting by him. I love that he slows down and stacks the receiver, the corner on his back, secures that reception. This was phenomenal. I can't, I can't tell you how impressive this is by Hertz. He has been getting screamed at off the right side of the line the entire game. Pressure has been coming this direction at him the whole game. And in this moment, he doesn't even glance at it, right? He doesn't look over there. He doesn't tip it off. He knows pressure is coming. He saw it pre-snap. He trusts his guys to pick it up. Jalen Hurts has ice in his veins. And he delivers a huge throw here to put the Eagles on the one-yard line, and they will end up going ahead and scoring on a brotherly shove on the next play. Jalen Hurts pays himself off. Most impressive, most impressive moment in the game for Jalen Hurts was that throw right there for me. This is really one of those games that when I watched it back on all 22, I felt a lot better about the performance. Yes, it wasn't clean, but Steve Spagnuolo threw some really good wrinkles at the Eagles offense. I really did think that they adjusted as the game went on. Uh, Jalen Hurts, for as many sacks as he took in the first half, as long as he was holding the ball, he ended up with an average time to throw of 2.61 seconds, which is his fastest of the year. He also had his lowest average depth of target of the season at 6.4 yards. And so, 
adjustments were made. The ball was coming out quicker. I thought the angle screens uh, were a great adjustment that was made on the fly. Uh, Overall, there's some things to be concerned about, some things to work on. But I feel a lot better about this performance after watching it back than I did watching it live on Monday night. 